Hey guys, welcome to Solo React Talk. Today I'm going to be reacting to Lin Fami History of Japan. Uh, today's episode is called The Empress, oh, Empress Jintu, Badass Third Female Empress of Japan, who played 3D chess. Okay? Um, if you want to check out my previous reactions, just remember I'll put the card at the top there. Just click on it and you'll be able to access them. Alright, let's start. 3, 2, one go murder schemes and political maneuvering executed with ruthlessness and competence that described empress jito the third female empress of japan she was daughter to emperor tenji when tenji died he left the throne to his son tenji's brother didn't like tenji's son very much and thought well why don't i just kill him and he did it was called the jinshin war and afterwards the brother became emperor tenmu Tenmu turned out to be a skillful leader, and so too was his beloved consort, Jito. She was 29. Yes, she married her uncle, but this was normal for the imperial house. Psst, don't miss out. Click subscribe and the bell. From the beginning, it was clear that she was no passive wife. Don't ask her for sandwiches. The historical texts say she followed Tenmu to the battlefront whenever he went to war. Although she didn't fight herself, she addressed the troops and mingled with the men. She and Tenmu strategized together. It was really cute. Shall we attack their flanks, honey? Let's use a pincer move and ram our pincers up there. Off the battlefield, Jito was a masterful politician. It seems she and Tenmu governed jointly. In the historical texts, we see them announce administrative laws addressing their subjects jointly, like equals. Jito was a good mother, and what do all good mothers do? tuck you into bed, make your lunches, and orchestrate the elimination of your political rivals to ensure that you sit on the throne. Jito had one son, Prince Sakabe, and she was determined to make him the next emperor. Now Tenmu had many consorts and children, but he eventually made Sakabe the crown prince, his heir to the throne. You can bet Jito had something to do with it. They groomed Sakabe for leadership, giving him administrative jobs, they also made a bunch of Tenmu's sons swear that they agree with Kusakabe being the crown prince. Near the end of his reign, Tenmu announced that Jito and Kusakabe would handle all state affairs. However, Kusakabe's future was not yet secure. Kusakabe had health issues, making him a less desirable candidate. And there was an up-and-comer, this accursed little hotshot named Prince Otsu, who was very capable, much more than Kusakabe. This is only my guess, but Sakabe seemed like the spoiled son whose parents wanted him to take over the family business, but everyone knew he'd just end up mucking everything up. That's probably why when Emperor Tenmu died, Sakabe did not succeed his father. We can imagine there was opposition to him. People may have preferred Prince Otsu instead. Jito, being the imposing figure that she was, immediately took over the reins of government. She wasn't even officially enthroned. She became a regent, a temporary ruler. It was bad news for the capable Prince Otsu. Jito wasted no time. She accused Otsu of plotting a rebellion and forced him to commit suicide. Historians widely believe that these were false charges to remove Otsu the obstacle. Unfortunately, all her scheming was for naught. Sakabe later died from karma. Okay, it could have been from his poor health. It could also have been foul play. Whatever it was, Jito's pride and joy was gone. So she finally took the throne herself and became empress. Turned out, she was a superb leader. She continued implementation of the Kiyomihara codes. These were laws passed under Tenmu based on Chinese ideas of the centralized state. In the Nara period, Japan was still in the middle of trying to create a strong central authority that could curb the influence of the powerful clans. She instituted wide-reaching tax and land reforms to support raising troops and making a strong bureaucracy. She also built the first large Chinese-style capital, Fujiwara-kyo. This was Japan's capital before it moved to Nara. Before Fujiwara-kyo, the capital moved whenever a new emperor came to power. It was little more than the emperor's residence. Fujiwara-kyo was different. It was much bigger, and it became the capital for three consecutive rulers. Now, Kusakabe had a son before he died, making him Jito's grandson. And Jito would love nothing more than to have her grandson rule after her. 
Problem was, her husband Tenmu had been very active when he was alive. Tenmu the Thirsty had many sons, and among them were many strong contenders for emperorship. And they all had to go, thought Jito. Killing them wasn't an option. There were too many, and it would be a little suspicious if Tenmu's sons started dying randomly. No, she needed a different plan, a more clever one. She used the fact that her father, Tenji, was a popular emperor. Before Tenji died, he had appointed his son as crown prince. She and her supporters claimed that by doing this, Tenji had wanted to establish a rule to be obeyed thereafter. A son should follow his father as emperor. Let's ignore the fact that her own husband, Tenmu, took the throne from Tenji's son. Empress Jito also created a national memorial day for her dead son, Ksakabe. Such a day was reserved for emperors, so she kind of shoehorned him in as an emperor after his death. This also meant that it made her role as empress something like a placeholder until the next male emperor takes power. We would see future empresses follow suit with this placeholder role. All this had a purpose. If we go by Tenji's rule that a son should follow the father, since Ksakabe was the previous emperor, it made only Ksakabe's son legitimate. This eliminated all of Tenmu's sons. And for the coup de grace, Jito abdicated the throne in favor of her grandson, who became Emperor Monmu. Before Jito, the next emperor usually came to power after the previous one died. Jito didn't wait. Again, Jito started a trend where future empresses would abdicate the throne instead of ruling until death. This made a lot of sense, actually, if you wanted to make sure the right person succeeded you. Empress Jito continued to be an influential leader in court and allied herself with the up-and-coming Fujiwara clan, particularly Fujiwara no Fuito. She helped them marry into the imperial family, and they helped with her plans. Fujiwara power only grew from here on out. Even on her deathbed, Empress Jito reiterated the father-to-son succession rule, always looking out for her family. Then she said, Give me a drink. I need to relax now. Hello, lovelies. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, you guys. Thank you everyone who watched these videos this year, 2018. You're part of a special group because 2018 was when I started taking this channel seriously. You were here at the beginning and I hope you'll stay. If anyone has fun holiday stories, share them in the comments. I did something fun recently. I was invited to a bachelorette party. I'm a guy in case you didn't know. So that was my first bachelorette. Huh. We have one new patron this week by the name of Forrest. I've always thought that was a cool name after seeing Forrest Gump. If you want to help support the channel, please check out the Patreon link in the description. Alright, much love guys. Spread the knowledge. Empress G2 was definitely playing 3D chess. She knew how to corner her enemies. She knew how to strike. She knew when to strike. Like... Oh my gosh, she set so many precedents that would be that would affect future generations. And she even made a new capital um, that would uh, be the residence of the imperial family for the next three generations. That's also amazing. That's also very amazing. And um, she tried her best to make sure that her line, like her children, her grandchildren, would become the, the emperor of, of Japan and I'm amazed I mean I thought she was going to kill all those consort uh, princes I thought she was going to kill all of them but no she she went down the legal route trying to justify um, the right of succession uh, from her son uh, Kusakabe to her grandson um, Monumo and that's amazing you know that that really is just an amazing political stroke that no one could come up against. She really did it out, like all out for her grandson. And I really hope, I, I'm not sure, but I really hope, you know, during those times, Emperor Mon um, Monumu really respected his grandmother, thanked his grandmother a thousand times, a hundred thousand times, because, if the, because of this woman and her actions, she secured his future and the future of his children. Really, it's amazing. 
it's amazing. And the Fujiwara clan, all the way from uh, the Tenji, Emperor Tenji period, they are still growing, very powerful. Um, they're still, you know, marrying into the imperial family. Um, I'm wondering what's going to happen to them, the Fujiwara clan. Considering what happened to the other clans, like the Soga clan, you know, how they rose to the highest echelons of power and then they came crashing down. I'm wondering how Fujiwara is going to um, survive all of this uh, accumulation of power uh, over time. But yeah, this was interesting. Okay guys, that's it. Um, oh yeah, and I think Japan needs to make a movie out of this lady. They need to make a movie out of this lady. I don't know, maybe there is a movie. Um, if there is, just tell me in the comment section or give me the link so I can look it up. But definitely they need to make a movie out of uh, Empress uh, Jitu and her life. All the way from when she was young, uh, when um, uh, Emperor Tenmu killed her brother and now she had to marry her uncle all from that time all the way to the end where she's an old lady in bed asking uh, for some something to drink you know so she can relax like they really need to make a movie out of this lady it's amazing okay that's it if you like the video please give me a like comment and subscribe to my channel click on the notification bell if you want to be up to date with my latest videos and i will see you next time Bye-bye.